We're looking at Wake Forest uh, scheduling for 2019 with Mike McDaniel from inside the ACC, Gobbler Country, and also in-season uh, reporting for ESPN at Blacksburg during uh, Hokies uh, football games. Looking at Wake Forest, uh, two things come of note here, Mike, and, and for people that are familiar with uh, the ACC scheduling format of playing everyone in your division and playing two teams on the other side, some people might be scratching their heads if they don't remember the contract that was signed a few years ago in the agreement between Wake Forest and North Carolina because Wake and North Carolina are actually playing a non-conference game. It's it's very odd, but Wake, if you look at the, the rest of their games, they don't play a Power 5 out of conference. Utah State should be a pretty tough group of five team despite losing one of the better young coaches in college football and Matt Wells to Texas Tech. But, uh, yeah, they've got Virginia Tech, and they've got another uh, game. Well, they always play Duke. But, uh, yeah, they got this oddity in playing a ninth ACC game that's going to count as a non-conference game. Very strange. We don't see this very often, but this is one of the situations where it's it's in play for Wake Forest. Tough group of five game in the opener against Utah State. They're extremely well coached. That's uh, not the easiest opener for Wake Forest. Um, a lot of people look at it uh, if you're not – haven't watched a lot of Utah State games. A lot of people look at that and say, oh, Utah State, they push over in week one. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> Wake, you, Wake Forest can absolutely lose that game to Utah State. Of course they can. They almost lost to Tulane in overtime in the opener this past season. So, Yeah, and, and they burned me on the spread in that game, and I won't forget it because it's one of the first games I lost against the spread <laughs> this year. Um, so that's definitely a losable game. Uh, but, you know, at Rice feels like they should win that game. North Carolina, don't know what they'll be under the new coaching staff. And um, Mac Brown, that's an interesting matchup. Again, an out-of-conference game. That, that Even though it's in conference, it's out-of-conference. Uh, Elon, that's winnable at BC. That's tough because it's on the road. You got a bye week. You got Louisville. Not really sure what they're going to be, but they should be improved. Florida State, you are got them at home as well. Not really sure what they're going to be, but they should be improved. Another bye week, home against NC State at Virginia Tech. That feels like a tough game at Clemson. That feels like a tough game. Home against Duke, then at Syracuse. If Wake Forest gets to six or seven wins with this schedule, it's been a successful season. Um, I, I think they do have, you know, they, they had a young team this year, um, and, and Dave Clawson was able to get a, a ton out of them. I think that's going to be the case again. Uh, in 2019, I think Jamie Newman is likely going to be the quarterback. If he's not, it's going to be Sam Hartman. Either way, I think Wake Forest is in capable hands. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what Wake does with this schedule. It's not the easiest schedule in the world, especially when you play in the Atlantic Division. But I think six or seven wins is probably in the cards for Wake Forest and another opportunity to go to a bowl game. And as you mentioned, Mike, uh, Dave Clawson can coach. He's built a pretty good program there at Wake Forest, and they've gotten to postseason play three consecutive years. And what have they done? They've shown up as an underdog three consecutive years and won a bowl game against the likes of Temple, Texas A&M, a pretty good Texas A&M team, and then this past year against Memphis in another exciting game. 